A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is really my great pleasure to be with you tonight and to present virtual human social robots for what form? First of all, we like to go technically how the history has come to humanoid robots is really what I would like to present. So first of all, in the history, we had a mechanical robot. In fact, they were the statues that were used by Greek uh, to pour water or wine for visitors. And what is interesting at the time is 250 years before Christus, we can see that the mechanical device was simple, but works. So the idea of having humans through statues being able to do tasks for human is not new. It dates out before Christus. So this is really something amazing. And this we can see in a museum in, in Greece, actually. Now, if we skip the centuries in the history, in the 18th centuries around the planet, but mainly in Europe, we can see, and in Switzerland, we can see many examples of automatons. First of all, they are piece of arts. And second, they have mechanical engineering behind, uh, which are absolutely complex and fabulous. It's almost impossible to do them again today, so complex they are. So these automatons were able to play music, to do things or write different texts. If we move forward to time, we had the virtual humans. In, in 87, we pioneered the field of virtu virtual humans, uh, modeling for the first time 3D Marilyn Monroe and 3D Humphrey Bogart, meeting in a cafe in Montreal. This was shown at for celebrating 100 years of engineering in Canada. So how we did this uh, pioneer work is first we had a plaster model of Marilyn, second we drew polygons and vertexes, and then afterwards we render the face, but more than that we developed very early pioneer facial animation software with below uh, abstract muscles and it was also possible to interact uh, in the system uh, to build a film, which we did in the film Rendezvous in Montreal. I just show you now an excerpt. Why such a stone face? Oh. Darling, I know you're worth a million, but I want you flesh and bones. All right, sweetheart. I love you. Ah. Here's looking at you, kid. Oh, play it again, Sam. Now we skip the years and we come to today, almost today, around 2010. So what was new in 2010? So what was new is mainly 
the software who has been developed enormously, and particularly the interaction. So what we can see on this picture is that we can do all kinds of signals, gestures, sound, shapes, and forces, and the computer through cameras is able to understand. Uh, and then when we get so much big data, uh, we can analyze and model events or even predict the future using deep learning algorithms. So this is relatively new after 2010. So it has given enormous possibilities towards the technology as we know it today. So our first human with robots, it was really around this time, is our robot Eva. As you can see, uh, it is really very realistic. And this robot was able really to naturally interact, particularly in the language before uh, ChatGPT, because the year we speak about is around uh, 2010. So we have multiple publications and very pioneer work on this humanoid robots. For now, for that time, it was difficult to think for what it can be used because it was so early that uh, nobody really likes to have such robots. Over time, I moved to Singapore and at NTU, and uh, we uh, bought Nadine Robot. In fact, we collaborate with a Japanese company to build it. And then uh, we developed fully in NTU the, you, the software platform. So what is new and with a lot of PhDs, we develop the recognition of faces. We develop uh, also the memory, the fact you can have uh, emotions or simulate emotions. And of course, understanding uh, what is being said around in 2013 forward. So this uh, robot was absolutely a success until now. It has gone to the Art Science Museum of Singapore for six months. Nadine has worked in, as customer agent in AI Singapore. But what is interesting also, she was the first to go to elderly home, Bright Hill elderly home, to uh, let's say be a social companion. So I will more detail this later on. Now, who are the most realistic robots in the world? I just cite three. Of course, I spoke of Nadine. In the middle, there are these Japanese robots, mainly uh, done by Professor Ishiguro in Japan. And at the right side is uh, probably the most well-known robot, Sophia, uh, done by human by Hanson Robotics, and why is well known also because she has been re uh, recognized as a citizen of Saudi Arabia. Now, a very fancy image you can see while we were preparing our presentation of Nadine in the United Nations early July, with, along with other well known famous robots. Sophia and Nadine were in the same time chatting together in a very fancy way. If you are interested, you can see this discussion on YouTube. I just would like to finish with this uh, problem of technology. We are not finished to go with the technology. Uh, we, first of all, the hardware still needs a lot of improvements. Why? Because a robot is made from motors and actuators and that's nothing new since uh, 30, 40 years in this. And we have to find more uh, something like the human anatomy. Uh, so that's quite a lot of research to do in this direction. The other thing we need to do, uh, and a lot of researchers are working around the planet on that, is the awareness of the surrounding. That means that social robots like Nadine should be able to recognize what is going on in a room, who is doing what, what are the behaviors, what are the objects. And for now, we can, a robot can only recognize two people. Also, in the behavior, uh, humanoid robots can only hold 10 kilos max maximum. So when they move, it's still, 
that the move is not so natural. So it's so many different development to do. So at least we need to use robots according to what is are the use for users. We need to know who are the big players in making robots today. And of course, we have to come back to Elon Musk. Uh, he has developed uh, robots Optimus uh, since two years in his Tesla company. And during his 2023 Tesla shareholder meetings, he has declared, and it's on YouTube, uh, that uh, he enjoys the fact that robots are being developed by Tesla because they enjoy all the software that is being done and also some hardware knowledge. And in his talk, he predicts that uh, Optimus robots will surpass the number of cars we have. And he's sure that uh, people all will have at least one a social companion so to do all kind of action to a very reasonable price. Let's see. But maybe the message I would like to forward now is the first thing we should have with this technology is to ask that why do we need a robot in, in a certain situation? And for example, my case study here, of course, is social robots in elderly homes or in private homes. So what could such robot do? And we can see if we develop the adequate application that a social robot can interact, interact and play with people. He can understand if the robot, if the person is sad or showing empathy, understanding what is being said. And if anything happens, monitor the family. Uh, and in the future, probably given physical assistance and so on. So now what is needed is the social workers or the people, caretakers who really know where a robot is inserted and say, maybe we don't need so much technology, but what we need is something very precise that will make the quality of life of the people better. So one of these famous robots is a humanoid robot Grace, done by Hanson Robotics, uh, which is a nurse. I have the pleasure to see her in Saudi Arabia and also uh, last summer in United Nations in Geneva. Uh, but at my knowledge, she was not involved in any insertion for many months in any place uh, as a nurse. It's more a demo uh, for now uh, robots. What is interesting, what we have done when we were in Singapore, uh, we brought Nadine to Bright Hill Evergreen Home, working with uh, Meping and We Are, and we have really uh, answered the needs of the people, and we have done two uh, studies that were published in top journal, like the visual computer. And what we can see, the people were quite happy. So this was really a very first study. After this, what is very interesting that a company was created and it, DexLab, and DexLab joined efforts uh, with Goshen and went together and particularly Goshen tried to find out what we can do with a robot in elderly home. And I must say that Without that, it's almost impossible to bring any tech, such high technology to any place. We need absolutely to look at the ethical value, what it brings, and work as much as the technical development. So here, I let you with this absolutely nice uh, application of the robot Dexty made in Singapore. And you can see now this uh, film uh, in elderly home.
，每天跟迪士尼唱歌，唱得很开心。哎、欸，唱歌唱得几好喎、哦！<笑>唱歌、玩游戏、玩游戏、还是赛、运动，最近最近过得很快，很高兴。现在有的戏来了，全部的步骤都很好，可以现在可以真的开怀大笑。Thank you。So thank you so much for your attention. What I will leave now, uh, we are and Neping to answer the question and explain how they are able to adapt uh, humanoid robots in an elderly home in order that people smile and have a better quality of life. Thank you very much. Enjoy your morning.